Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. This video was recorded during the Early Access event, where thanks to Wizards of the Coast I got access to a fully unlocked account to preview some of the new cards from Dominaria United, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, my deck features two copies of The World Spell, the 7-mana Mythic Rare Enchantment Saga, featuring the new Read Ahead mechanic, which appears on Sagas, potentially now letting us skip some of the earlier chapters, and potentially go straight to Chapter 3 if we want to, in this case putting up to two non-saga permanent cards from our hand straight onto the battlefield, so that can give us a huge mana advantage if we can cheat two other expensive cards into play, and we can also find those expensive cards with the first two chapters where we get to look at the top seven cards of our library, revealing a non-saga permanent card from among them and put it into our hand. And some of the exciting cards we can find with the world spell include Tovalar's Huntmaster, a 6-6 making a pair of wolf tokens when it enters a battlefield, and if it ever transforms to knight, can make more wolf tokens when attacking and use those wolves to fight as well. And then we also have two copies of Titan of Industry, the 7-7 Reach Trampler, that can maybe make a Rhino token when it enters, gain 5 life, destroy artifacts or enchantments, and put a shield counter on a creature we control. And then we also have four copies of Defiler of Vigor, another exciting new card from Dominaria United, a 5-mana 6-6 Trampler, but there's more. As an additional cost to cast our green permanent spells, we can pay two life to replace essentially a green mana symbol on those cards, so it replaces it with a Phyrexian mana symbol, allowing us to pay two life and potentially save a bit of mana. And then whenever we cast a green permanent spell, regardless of any Phyrexian mana shenanigans, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. So this is an awesome card that also potentially helps us ramp into our 7 drops ahead of schedule by turning some of those green mana symbols into Phyrexian mana. And then the Defiler is also just an awesome card to cast naturally and follow it up with even more spells to pump the team. Great synergy with Huntmaster making those wolf tokens that we can then also pump up. But this deck is still very much a fight rigging deck at its core. The three mana hideaway enchantment lets us take a look at the top five cards of our library to exile one of them face down. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a plus one counter on a creature we control. And then if we control a creature with power seven or greater, we can play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. And our deck is capable of enabling fight rigging as early as turn four, thanks to a Reservoir Kraken, a 4 mana 6 6 with Trample and Ward 2, although the opponent gets to potentially tap down our Kraken and give us an unblockable 1 1 fish token at the beginning of each combat. So it's not quite as powerful as it may appear, but still a great way to enable fight rigging, which can then help us maybe cast a free world spell or Titan of Industry as early as turn four. And then we've got some cheap ramp to help us out, four copies of Lenore or Loam Speaker, another new addition from Dominaria, a 1-3 that can tap to add one mana of any color, or we can tap it to transform one of our lands into a 3-3 elemental with haste, so we can keep up the pressure. Then we also have four copies of the Merge Keeper, a 1-1 that taps for green, unless it's modified, which includes plus one counters, in which case it taps for double green. So great to play a turn two Keeper, turn three Fight Rigging, put a counter on it, can tap for two mana to potentially play another one of our two drops, and also great synergy with the Defiler, as it will easily pick up a counter to make double green. And then we've got the full set of Colossal Sky Turtle, which can be channeled for one on a blue to bounce an opposing creature back, giving us some cheap interaction, can channel to get cards back from our graveyard, and also just a 7 mana 6-5 flyer with a ward 2, so if we happen to find it with fight rigging, it's still a fine card to cheat into play, can potentially enable Defiler, can cast it for 6 mana using 2 life, and can also potentially find it with a world spell and cheat it into play. And same goes with a Greater Tanuki, which can be channeled for Tuna Green to find a basic land to put on the battlefield tapped, helping us ramp, and also a 6-5 Trampler that we can potentially cast or cheat into play. And then our mana base features the new Yavimaya Coast as a pain land, we've got two Thornwood Falls, four Cascade, six Forest, six Island, and the Channel Lands as well, giving us a tiny bit more interaction. Could potentially also play the Fetch Lands to synergize with Sky Turtle, which can get them back from the graveyard, so that's a choice you can make. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, this is very promising if we can live the dream of Keeper surviving 
gets a counter with fight rigging, will help us ramp into Defiler and eventually the World Spell. Opponent Esper Colors. And we even have a Kraken now to enable fight rigging. Liliana would be bad. It's gonna be Rafine instead. So underdog hits us for four. Opponent off to a nice start. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll just play a Reservoir Kraken, which is pretty likely to survive thanks to Ward 2. And then next turn, we can fight rigging enable it. If I fight rigging now, that could also work, but we won't be able to really use the mana from Merge Keeper, whereas at least Kraken gives us a nice blocker. So we'll try this approach. Could have maybe played Kraken second main, on the off chance that our opponent wants to tap it. Give us a 1 1 and then play Meat Hook Massacre, killing Merge Keeper and the token, and then hit us for a bunch. So Kraken stays on defense. Rafine probably attacks. Nope, both creatures attack, so they can potentially put two counters on Underdog. And while we could trade, I would really like to enable fight rigging. So I think we let this happen. And a shielded. Alright, that's gonna start draining us as well. So we need a good fight rigging hit. And uh, yeah, that's probably our best bet here. Find Huntmaster or World Spell. World Spell seems better. And we're gonna read ahead here. Putting in Huntmaster and Defiler. That was an impactful turn. And Kraken can hit for 7. Fine trading it for Shieldred now. And we've got another World Spell in hand, which can pump our team with Defiler next turn, potentially. Can jump Underdog with a Wolf if needed. Rafine attacks. Discarding Dorothea. Down to five we go. And Lisa, another big flyer, so we could still be in a bit of trouble here. We're at three, so I can't pay for XA mana for both of these, but I can for one. So fight rigging might be our best bet since World Spell. Putting permanence in play is not that relevant when I can just cast a fight rigging and I don't really need the card advantage part of the card. So, fight rigging just for 3 mana. Bump or team. Hideaway finds Titan of Industry. Yeah, that seems good. Couple more triggers. And we want to grow. Probably our Trampler here. Cast Titan. Pump our team once again. And then definitely need to gain life. And we can put a shield counter on one of our creatures. And let's put it on the Filer. Well, that was a good turn. 
What if we attack with all? They can block with Lisa, Shieldred, and Underdog profitably on the smaller creatures. They would gain 4 up to 21. And then still take more than 21. So this seems relatively safe. So they maybe block Shieldred on Huntmaster. Lisa eats a wolf. Underdog eats a wolf. Then they're still taking 21 but gaining 4, which is not quite enough. Yeah, I think this is fine. So this is still lethal. Barely. So we needed a very impressive draw here to stand a chance against the Esper deck. Although if they were on the play, which makes a big difference too. And there we have it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's definitely a mulligan. This we can try to keep. It's gonna be a little bit slow to get going. Tanuki into double defiler is gonna be our plan. Alright, turn to Loam Speaker is a nice pickup. Opponent Asper Colors and a Cult Conscript can come back from the graveyard. Hope to dodge a turn 3 Liliana of the Veil. They might have a bounce spell here instead. Next turn we're gonna most likely channel Tanuki. So we've got a blocker for Conscripts. And we get to untap. Alright, let's pass it back. Can channel at instant speed. And if our Loam Speaker is still around, we could even play a Huntmaster first. That way we have some Wolves in play to put counters onto with Defiler. Opponent passes. There could also be some counter spells in our future. And for now get an Island. Okay. So, Huntmaster versus Defiler. Maybe it's worth it to play Defiler first anyway, in case of a counterspell. And play a Thornwood Falls as well. That resolves. Although, does it stick around? It gets bounced by Rona's Vortex, fair enough. At least the Huntmaster will leave behind some wolf tokens if they try and bounce it again. Silver Scrutiny just to draw once, or opponent maybe missing their land drop. We get to untap, and the uh, Merch Keeper's excellent. So we'll play this as a land, and then. We can play Defiler into Merge Keeper to get the first counters going. And then I think I'll just pay the Phyrexian mana here. And Loam Speaker can attack. And then next turn I can maybe play a Defiler, followed by Huntmaster, because we'll also put counters on the Merge Keeper, which will then tap for double green. Never mind. So now what's our plan? If I play a Defiler first, we won't quite be able to play Huntmaster afterwards. 
even with the extra land here, the filers five, we don't get any counters on Merch Keeper. So then we'll be a little bit short. So maybe now we'll tap out for Huntmaster while there's no counter spells to get those guaranteed tokens going. Can also activate our Loam Speaker at some points. They might have the one mana removal spell. Kill a creature with total power and toughness five or less. And then I'm hoping to pick up another green permanence so we can maybe play Defiler and put counters on the team right away. Opponent could have some sweepers in their deck as well. They have double white for maybe a depopulate. So that's a concern. But at least if they're gonna pass, it's gonna transform to knight, which benefits our Huntmaster. So they gotta do something. Shieldred's not bad. 4-5 Death Touch will slowly drain us. And um, yeah, we could activate Loam Speaker, but just doesn't get past Shieldred. If we pass a turn, then we can potentially fight with our Huntmaster as well. Or I can play Defiler. So, interesting spot. I think playing the Fowler is alright. And then hopefully next turn we'll be able to make some progress and pump our team. Meat Hook Massacre for 4 right now would still leave Huntmaster and Defiler around. It's gonna be Urtai Resurrected, killing either Huntmaster or Defiler here. Goes for Defiler. Good synergy with Shieldred as well. Draining us for 2. Alright, we need something exciting here. Alliance, not quite. Okay, so we'll pass, let it transform to Knight. And now we can maybe fight with Pack Leader. Don't have enough Wolves to kill Shieldred, but maybe once we attack. Rona also will drain us. Opponent considers, and drains us for one, and will gain life with Shieldred. So opponent's got a nice Asper midrange deck here. They did cast two spells, so it's going to transform back to daytime. So won't be able to attack with Pack Leader and potentially kill Shieldred with the fights. Ooh, nice fight rigging. That's a good one. Counter on Huntmaster, and if they bounce it, we can replay it, make more wolves. March of Wretched Sorrow, not quite enough to kill it here. And we find another Huntmaster or Fight Rigging, let's take another Huntmaster. And uh, might as well play this out. So this happens, and do we want to attack now with our original Huntmaster? Might be better off waiting still. And if they can't cast a spell, they're in trouble with double Huntmaster about to transform. Right, they've got another Resurrected. It is legendary, so one of them will die. Kills our 7-7. And find a Titan of Industry. Not bad. Can put a shield counter on Huntmaster while gaining some life.
and move to combat. Don't think we're animating a land with Loam Speaker just yet. Counter on probably Huntmaster. They could just chum block with a Conscript, I guess. Opponent takes it. Alright, opponent's out of action now. Huntmaster's gonna transform. And now it's party time. So, can play another Huntmaster. Still have quite a bit of mana available. Can also put a counter on Merch Keeper. So it taps for double green. Six, seven, although that wouldn't make a huge difference. And still play Huntmaster here. And then I can fight with the 7-7 seven, seven as well if I'd like, or fight with our shield counter. Thanks to the new pack leader allowing the fight. So shield her down. And counter on our trampler. Attack with all. Make more wolves. And that should do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, plan is simple, fight rigging into Kraken. Hopefully we don't face too much interaction along the way. But at least a ward means that it's trickier for the opponent to keep up instant speed removal. Opponent red-white. And a turn to adversary. Okay. World spell. Could be nice too. If we eventually ramp into it, but for now a Titan of Industry is what we're gonna try and cheat into play with fight rigging. We're kind of hoping the opponent keeps up some sort of removal, maybe a fateful absence, since they wouldn't be able to pay for ward, so that would waste their turn. It's going to be Hopeful Initiate, which can eventually destroy enchantments, but that's going to be a while. Play Kraken. And enable Fight Rigging. There's a Titan, which they could potentially kill with a Fateful Absence in response to the shield counter here. But uh, we're going to make a Rhino and uh, probably shield counter on the Rhino token to diversify our threats a little bit. There's still Brutal Cathar to worry about, I guess, which would exile the token, but can also exile Titan. Shield counter on the Rhino token, I think. That way, if they Brutal Cathar exile the token, it's not going to feel too bad. And Defiler of Vigor also ramps into our 7 drops here. Opponents get to ruin Defiler, the red one. Can easily remove shield counters. Could see a Hammer Hand as well to give it haste. Tovalar's Huntmaster, an excellent draw. Alright, let's uh, move to combats. Counter on Titan. And Kraken, Titan, and I think even the Rhino can attack here. As we'll be able to play the Filer on defense. Don't expect any sweepers out of the opponent's deck. And hopefully we get to cast a world spell next turn with a land. And then our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is ramping into a Colossal Sky Turtle. That's not going to cut it. This is a lot more promising. 
bottomless kite hurdle and then keep merge keeper which will also benefit from fight rigging to make more mana and play an early defiler and then maybe follow it up with a hunt master as well where now we can attack for two and find probably another fight rigging here to spin the wheel again and I could already play hunt master next turn if I'd like a light pause so our opponent on an aura deck Another fight rigging, which finds Tanuki. Right, so not the best two hits of fight rigging, but that might be okay here. Next turn, play Defiler. Casting Tanuki off fight rigging will trigger it as well, putting counters on the team. This might be a matchup where we want to find a Sky Turtle to channel and bounce whatever creature they have. Maybe they put a bunch of enchantments on it. It's going to be a careful cultivation for now. And a sheltering bows. So a 4 8 light pause already. Another defiler is nice. Cast that. Double fight rigging. Growing, probably just a hunt master. Cast Tanuki. And hopefully 10 power is enough here. this. And another Defiler coming up. Bypass for Unblockable, okay. Can our opponent somehow one-hit KO us? Combat Research for card draw. So yeah, I can kind of see where this is going. Light Pause is definitely a scary card. But I think we had a good enough start to overpower it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's functional. Hoping to draw probably Fight Rigging and a couple lanes. But uh, Merch Keeper Tanuki gives us a bit of ramp. And then, uh, yeah, we've got some powerful creatures to follow up. Opponents also ramping. Beast Caller, okay, so we could see a fight spell as well. Double Beast Caller, scary start. I could play Kraken just to try and stem the bleeding a bit and then next turn just play a Defiler if there's no fight. Don't hate that idea. Can play it second main. Another Beast Caller, okay. At least the Kraken's Doing an okay job on defense here, Gala Greeters. Prioritizing the counter over the ability. And they're gonna time down Kraken. Can chum block the 5 5 Beast Caller. And play our Defiler. And hoping the 6 6 Trampler can hold off any attacks. Otherwise, we're gonna be in trouble. I 
All right, loam speaker activates land. So there might be a pump spell in hand as a last card. Ooh, a tail swipe. Okay, that's gonna result in a trade. Counters move to another creature. So that's rough. But at least your opponent's empty handed. And we've got a Huntmaster to follow up here. And then I might be better off jumping next turn, although I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. Another Kraken. So play Huntmaster. Keep Kraken back. Oddity with haste. That might be a little bit too much for us to handle. They can tap Kraken. Send in four creatures. But we do have a Huntmaster, which at least lines up favorably. So let's see here. Can block. Maybe the Gala Greeters at this point. And then... Chump, Chump, Double Block. Otherwise they might be able to transform this as well at some point. That looks okay. Okay, can play Kraken or Tanuki. No huge difference. I guess um, Tanuki might be the more reliable blocker. And it's also more mana efficient. Didn't think I'm in a position to attack. Hoping our opponent drew a land so we can transform Huntmaster. So now Pack Leader probably wants to attack. Could also send Tanuki, might be a little aggressive. And then I can fight one of the Beast Callers with a wolf token to kill those as well. So fighting both wolves is not quite going to work since they get to move the plus one counters. So we're just going to fight once, let the trade happen and play another Kraken. with a Boseju to uh, get rid of our Tanuki, so they're playing double Boseju here. Yeah, that's a nice answer. Six eight Loam Speaker at least doesn't trample, but it's gonna hold off our Krakens. So it's a bit of a staring contest now. And uh, yeah, hoping to top deck something powerful. Can move to combat, see what happens. No attacks, play Tanuki. Sky Turtle would be great, bouncing Loam Speaker. I'll take a fight rigging. Titan. Could draw the uh, seven mana saga, of course. Defiler of Vigor, although we won't be able to use it for life. All right, there we go. Probably fine to cast it now. Even though we could try and wait to get immediate value in case of another fight spell. No attacks. Another tail swipe, it's too bad. Taking out Kraken. 
instead of Defiler. Get to untap. And we're just gonna pass it back. Cemetery Prowler. Fair enough. We'll make creatures cheaper, I'm sure. Another Defiler. Cast it for 5 mana. And we're getting close to turning the team sideways. Alright, Tail Swipe is this number 3 or 4? Number 4. Deals with our Defiler. And a Sky Turtle can now bounce Loam Speaker. And then how aggressive do we want to get? I mean, I could also just cast it, honestly, which wouldn't be bad either. Although bouncing seems slightly better. Unless there's like a hexproof trick to protect it, in which case casting would have been better. And two creatures back to block should be enough, even in the case of an oddity, which would be the worst case scenario. Ooh, oddity. Can jump oddity with a 3 3, Prowler with a 2 2. Go to one. Opponent's got seven toughness back, so I need a green spell to present lethal, and what a green spell to do it. GG's, close game here. Opponent got us to one. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our blue-green fight rigging world spell deck in action. And yeah, from my experience, world spell were mostly just reading ahead to chapter 3 to cheat even more stuff into play. But in a game like the last one we just played, if we drew it, it would have been an awesome source of card advantage using the first two chapters to find more of our creatures. So overall, what do we think of this deck? I don't think it's going to end up being very competitive, as most of these fight rigging decks tend to be. They're quite vulnerable to some well-timed removal on the fight rigging itself. Also relies pretty heavily on the two mana creatures surviving, and in a world with Liliana of the Veil, vale, that can be pretty rough, especially if you're on the draw. Opponent can make you sacrifice one of them, and then you don't have any meaningful way of pressuring a Liliana. So you could potentially replace some of your two drops with careful cultivation, which at least plays around sorcery speed removal as you can channel it end of turn, although it's slightly less synergistic with fight rigging and defiler of vigor. So that's going to be it for me today. Let me know in the comments which cards from Dominaria United you're most excited to see in standard. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.